Forgotten language by Shel Silverstein's A Common Reading at Flower Communion. Once I spoke the language of the flowers. Once I understood each word the caterpillar said. Once I smiled in secret at the gossip of the starlings and shared a conversation with the housefly in my bed. Once I heard and answered all the questions of the crickets and joined the crying of each falling, dying flake of snow. Once I spoke the language of the flowers. How did it go? How did it go? We've lost the meaning of much and our understanding of much, flowers included. Once many people knew all the medicinal properties of the flowers and plants around them. Now few of us do. You can get a little bit of an education now walking down a tea aisle in a supermarket as we've recovered a bit of it to common knowledge. But there was once no need for such a thing. We have indeed lost a lot of the language of the plants and the flowers around us. Some years ago, preparing a flower communion, the coming of age class was involved and there were two Girl Scouts in the class and they did a whole presentation on the symbolic meanings of flowers. Aster, wisdom. Lily, purity. Chrysanthemum, loyalty. Daffodil, rebirth. Daisy, innocence, freshia, joy, gladiolus, strength, heather, admiration, hydrangea, understanding, iris, royalty and faith, lilac, tranquility, orchid, admiration, peony, prosperity, rose, love, sunflower, adoration, tulip, confidence. Their list was longer, but you get the idea. I knew virtually none of those that made me the rose when I, when I heard it from them. You know, and we've lost yet again other layers of meaning, of language that once we knew, once we understood, and once we didn't have to be reminded of. Language is not acquired easily, but it is lost easily. And language necessary for us to communicate with each other. My first class session in music theory at college, wonderful professor who I later came to work with a lot, a guy named Harry Submerger, flute player, came in and he went through the usual first class stuff. He went all through the syllabus. He talked about the basics of music theory and what we would learn and what the assignments would be, and that we would all need to not only write an original 16-bar composition, but we would need to be able to sing it on key in order to pass the class. I know some of you are saying, and I passed the class, yes, but I did, I managed it. I think he was a little gracious, but I did pass. And he went on about some of the other things about music and why he loved it. And then, before he ended the class, he said, I'll see you next time, which was the only words any of us understood because the entire previous 15 minutes he spoke entirely in Armenian to emphasize, as he told us, that music is a language and that here we will learn to speak the language so that we will never forget. Only one person dropped the class and didn't come back for the second session, which I thought was pretty remarkable. But we did learn to speak the language, and I bet few of us have forgotten. I know it's something I've taken with me all the years since. Not being able to understand the language, or worse, forgetting it, is very difficult. We lose touch, we lose sense with so much. We lose connection not only to our environment, but to each other. Polarized and political, not just skeptical, but suspicious. We've lost the language of love and kindness and compassion and forgiveness.
in his famous sermon, Theodore Parker, what he called the transient and permanent in Christianity, spoke a lot about how religion loses its own language. It gets stuck in the trappings that come and go, in the style of music, the style of buildings, the organizational structure, the ways people govern their churches, it all comes and goes, the prayers, the languages. But he said what Jesus taught was simple, love each other, trust each other, treat each other justly, have compassion, be kind, take the side of the oppressed and the poor, and heal the sick. It's not very complicated. But his sermon goes through all the things over the years that have separated people from the core of the teaching. Arguments over how to sit, how to pray, what language to use, which books are holy and which aren't. All transient. The only permanence is the simplest and yet sometimes still the most difficult. We get stuck in every transience that comes between us. What we like, what we don't like, who offended us, who looked at us the wrong way, whose politics are important. Our entire society losing the permanent for the transient of power, control, money, advantage, usually out of fear. We no longer hear, we don't want to hear any language we don't understand. So difficult to learn or even remember a language, but impossible if we don't even want to try. We need to remember the forgotten language of the flowers and all the languages we forget. We need to remember to learn languages we don't understand. Another poem popular for Flower Communion, whose author I do not know. Speak, flowers, speak. Why do you say nothing? The flowers have the gift of language. In the meadow they speak of freedom, creating patterns wild and free as no gardener could match. In the forest, they nestle snug carpets under the roof of leaf and branch, making a rug of such softness. At end table branches, they cling briefly before bursting into fruit sweet to the taste. Flowers, can you not speak joy to our sadness, hope to our fear? Can you not say how it is with you that you color the darkest corner? The flowers have the gift of language. At the occasion of birth, they are buds before bursting. At the ceremony of love, they unite the lovers in beauty. At the occasion of death, they remind us how lovely is our life. Oh, would that you had voice, silent messengers of hope. Would that you could tell us how you feel, arrayed in such beauty. The flowers have the gift of language in the dark depths of a death camp. They speak the light of life. In the face of cruelty, they speak courage. In the experience of ugliness, they bespeak the persistence of beauty. Speak, O messengers, for we would hear your message, for we need to hear what you would say. For the flowers have the gift of language. They transport the human voice on winds of beauty. They lift the melody of song to our ears. They paint through the eye and hand of the artist. Their fragrance binds us to sweet-smelling earth. May the blessing of the flowers be upon you. May their beauty beckon to you each morning, and their loveliness lure you each day, and their tenderness caress you each night. May their delicate petals make you gentle, May their eyes make you aware. May their stems make you sturdy. And their reaching make your heart care. 